everyone and welcome back to the organized notebook. In this video we wanted to go over how you can make a monthly planner with Notion. So let's get started. You'll first want to start with opening an empty Notion page and let's call this monthly planner. And let's go ahead and go to the top right hand corner three dots and choose small text full width so we have more space on the page. Next we will want to add a cover photo so we can click add cover then we'll go to change cover and we'll go to unsplash and choose something with a nice view and let's go with this picture and we'll reposition it a bit and save position so in this monthly planner we are going to have our monthly plans on the left hand side and a main monthly planner calendar on the right hand side so for that we'll want to make two columns so type slash column and we'll choose two columns and so this side will be our monthly plans. And on this side, we'll have our monthly calendar. And it's a good idea to write these in like this as placeholders because it's so easy to lose the columns. And now let's actually go ahead and create our monthly calendar on the right hand side. And we'll move this column a little bit to the left so we have more space. And let's go ahead and make slash calendar calendar view and we'll choose plus new database and we'll type title this monthly planner and let's already go ahead and hide the database title because it can look quite messy with this there so you'll want to go to the three dots here and then go to layout and then you can toggle show database title off and now we can actually convert this into a heading three by clicking the six dots here and then turn into heading three and you can type enter slash divider and now we have our monthly calendar on this side and let's go ahead and configure the properties of our monthly calendar so if you imagine using this as your monthly calendar let's think about what kind of properties we would want here so obviously we need the date and tags are a good idea because you could have things like work, calendar, event, or if it's a personal event. So you could keep tags and whenever you want to add a new tag, you could just click here and say, for example, vacation. And you could click here. And then if you wanted to change the color of this tag, you could click the three dots here and choose from any of these colors. So let's say that we have a vacation here. And you could add additional information underneath. And if we click out, you'll notice that you only see the title. So what you can do is go to the three dots here and you go to properties and then you can show the tags. So now we see that the vacation event has a tag as well. So we highly recommend doing this so you can see it on your calendar. And if you need to move the event to multiple days, you can also stretch it out like this, for example. And this is a good way to show your bigger picture events. So now let's go to the monthly plans. Here as well, you can change this into heading three by clicking the six dots here, turn into, and then choosing heading three. And then you can type enter slash divider to add a divider underneath. And let's go ahead and add gallery view database here for our monthly plans. So slash gallery view. And we'll do plus new database here as well. And we'll call this monthly plans. And let's also hide the database title here as well by going to the three dots here. And we go to layout and we toggle off show database title. And now you'll notice that you see inside the card. So if you click here, you'll notice that there's these check boxes here. And we can delete that because those were the default things that were inside these cards. And we can also choose if we need tags and the created date. And we don't need either of these. So we're just going to go ahead and delete these properties while we're here. And delete. And now we can do plus add property and we can add a date property so that we can key check of the date of this monthly plan. And now you'll notice that 
these are empty so we actually need to go to the three dots here and we need to go to layout and then change the card preview from page content to page cover so if we do page cover you can add a cover photo to each of your monthly plans and then you can see the cover photo reflected on the outside so we're going to choose this if you don't like using cover photos you could also just do none but we're just going to do page cover and now we could actually go ahead and choose a cover photo so for example for this one we would do october 2023 and we can add a cover that's going to reflect the season so we can go to unsplash and choose something from october and choose one here and we could even have fun and add an icon so we could choose some kind of pumpkin and it would start looking like this so now we can actually move it over a little bit so we can have more space for the monthly calendar and make the monthly plans a little bit smaller and now what we're going to do is create the monthly plan template that will be copied into each monthly plan entry so for that you'll want to go to this blue button here and click the arrow and let's click plus new template and we're going to call this monthly plan and then we're going to start messing with the layout in this page so we want to actually open it in full page so we can see it better and we're going to go ahead and also go to the three dots on the right hand side to do small text full width so we have more space and now we actually want to have a linked view of the calendar that we just created for the monthly uh, plan, uh, monthly calendar. So for that, we're going to do slash and then linked. And we're going to leave a linked view of database and we're going to link it to monthly planner. And now you'll see that we have the vacation here that we just added from the previous section. And in this one, we actually want two columns. So we're going to type slash column and choose two columns. And we're going to go ahead and drag this into the second column. So you should be able to find it like this. And then now we're going to drag this over here. And actually here we can also make a heading monthly calendar. And we'll change this into heading three and we'll add a divider slash divider and now on this side we can add our month goals and a quick to-do list so that you always have a to-do list on your planner so we're going to do slash heading three and then we'll type month goals slash divider and then we're going to add checkboxes here slash checkbox or to do and then if we want to multiply these checkboxes, all you have to do is type command control D as many times as you need for this. And then now what we can do is copy this whole thing by dragging like this. And you can do command C and then command V. And then now what we can do is change this into our quick to do. So you can always just have this here and continuously updated during the month as you keep track of your to-do list and then now at the bottom what we could do is add a reflection corner for the month start and the month end so for that let's do slash heading again heading three and beginning of month reflection and we can do slash divider and here we can ask some questions such as what do I want to accomplish this month? What do I want to prioritize this month? And so on. So you can just come up with your own questions here. And for this, it's nice if you actually bold it so you can see it better. So you just have to highlight and then you'll get these text options and then you can bold. And now what we can do is copy these blocks and now we can add an end of month reflection here as well. And instead of what do I want to accomplish this month, you could do what did I accomplish? Did I accomplish this month? 
and what did I prioritize this month? And we could add one more question, which would be, what went well this month? What could be better? And we can bold this as well. So now we have a basic template for each monthly plan. And of course, you can customize this the way you like it and the way you like to reflect on the beginning, end of month, or even a middle of the month reflection could be useful. So now we can click back here and what we can do is we can now click here to go back and if we click into the monthly plan, now you can choose monthly plan here and it's going to load your monthly plan like so. So this is a really good way to plan every month and reflect on it and so on. And now what we can do is actually set that as a default template so that every time you add a new monthly plan, it's going to use that template. So let's go ahead and set as default for all views and monthly plans. And if you actually just wanted it to happen every month, you could even add this repeat function here so that every month you'll get a new monthly plan. But for now, we'll just keep it this way. And let's actually go ahead and add a few more months just so that we can see how it goes. Let's say this is for November 2023 and we can add some kind of icon here. They have a turkey, maybe feather. And we can add a cover photo, Unsplash and Thanksgiving. We could add just this one. And we have December. So once you have some monthly plans here, now what we can do is adjust the filter and sort so that you have the relevant monthly plan that you want on the left hand side. And before that, what we should actually do is just to make sure that we have the, the load limit here. So right now it's at 10 pages, which is what we want, because if it was at 50, 100 or 25, it's just gonna show too many things here. Uh, if you happen to plan ahead really far. So now what we can do is we can add a filter so that we're not going to see old monthly plans here. So we can add filter and we can add a date filter and we can make sure that the end date of the monthly plan is after today. So on or after today. So that, that way we know for sure that if we added a monthly plan that was in the past, we won't see it here. So we can do like this and say for everyone. And the other thing we can do is go ahead and change the sort as well. So that the sort is descending. So we see the most farthest in the future on here. Although if you usually plan ahead really far in advance and you want to see the most relevant one for you on the top, then you might want the opposite direction sort. So just play around with the sort and filter functions to find what works best. That's basically it with the monthly planner. We hope this was useful for you. Let us know if you have any questions, comments, or anything that was confusing with this video. And we hope to see you in the next one.